All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. We're going to have a fun time doing this still life. We're going to cover a three-part process you'll just see in a second. Uh, we're going to use our uh, electronic devices. So today I will have my phone on camera here. So we'll be able to see the um, still life here. And um, again, it's going to be a shorebird uh, mason jar with some mini roses and a uh, artist paintbrush. So we'll do all these three uh, items here for our subject matter. And we're on a, a white tablecloth. And uh, we have a background here. So we did a little bit of splashes of color in the background on the back of the table where the table meets the wall. But you'll see how um, we develop this uh, composition. We're going to have a fun time. Uh, we'll cover all the colors we're going to mix. We'll discuss how we're using our brushes, how much water we're going to use in our brushes, how much paint, different little techniques we'll cover, using a tissue to dry off your brush a little bit, to check off some of the water. If there's too much water in your brush, sometimes that can be a problem. So you'll we'll learn little different things here just along the way as we go, as we always do on my videos. I'm so glad you're here, and uh, let's get started. And just a quick look at the finished painting, a little bit of a close-up. You could work from this too. Um, I think maybe if you hit pause, sometimes you can probably work. Some of you might like to work from this part of the uh, video, this finished painting as we're looking at it here. I'm not sure how much um, the focus, uh, I'm not sure if the picture gets fuzzy if you hit pause on your electronic device or not, but this is also an option too. But I just wanted to kind of show a little more of the close-up of the painting before we get started. So let's get started right now. All right, so we just uh, saw the finished uh, painting, and uh, we're going to kind of just um, do a couple of notes here on a sheet of uh, printer paper, just to kind of develop the um, ideas first um, on some paper uh, as to the process we'll use for this uh, painting. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do a pre preliminary sketch. I apologize if my spelling is not 100%. Preliminary sketch first. Okay, so that would be the first. And then the second thing, we'll do our contour drawing. And then third, we're going to... Uh, painting. So that's kind of like the three-step process. And then if we were to put in some details, uh, maybe we would say, um, well, I think we'll just kind of, we'll go with each one of these and we'll revisit this, um, our list here so that we have our, um, so let's start out with the preliminary sketch and then we'll kind of just talk, talk about it and we're as we go and work on this and also a good thing I like to mention is um, for this composition in painting I'm going to try to do it a little more uh, expeditiously quickly rapidly like I'm not going to spend too much time really um, getting too much detail in what I'm doing purposely. I want to do it that way so we kind of go through this process of getting this painting done kind of quickly so it's kind of like we can kind of all see how it develops kind of quickly and we can get it done kind of fast and then um, you know as you work at home in your studio um, or in your kitchen and wherever you like to work and do your painting you'll kind of take your time a little more of course. And you'll also have this um, here all the time. We're going to keep this on the camera. This is the actual uh, mason jar with some mini roses and a, um, a shorebird here and a paintbrush. We have a watercolor paintbrush there. And I will not probably put any of the stripes on this tablecloth. At this point in time, I might just leave it um, white paper for the tablecloth. So it'll be like a, a plain white tablecloth on top of our table here. And then the background, I'm going to leave, of course, that white uh, background too as well, like that light-colored uh, backdrop. So uh, let's begin. The first thing I like to do is let's 
uh, we'll get a, a rectangle here started and what I'll do is I'll I'll draw it up to that point there I want to use the whole paper that we have here like that so I'll once we're done with the painting and our final processes and finishing up then I can lift off the phone and then just fill in a little bit of color or whatever we want to do up here in this right hand corner up here so preliminary sketch essentially what that is is a way to start out the drawing process getting everything kind of in place where you want it before going in and doing heavy doing any heavy lines where it might be a little harder to lift up pencil lines with an eraser we do have a kneaded eraser here and we'll use that when we need to but that preliminary sketch is really a super light sketch now what i'll do is i'm going to see how it looks on camera as we go if you can see this light sketch i'm hoping you can clearly then uh, it's good but i will purposely go a little darker so if you can imagine the preliminary sketch is only supposed to be uh so you can see it but very very super light just so that you can see it, so that when you go in to do your other contour drawing, pencil drawing on top of the preliminary sketch, you'll be able to see it. That's all you need is to be visible to you yourself. But as we're doing a video here, I realize some people a lot of times might say, I, it's hard for me to see the pencil line, so I'll go a little darker. But just remember this first preliminary sketch should be very, very light. Okay, so now what I'll do is look at my reference photo. And this is also the same setup I have across from me in my studio on a table with a uh, spotlight over top. Okay, so I would say I'm going to maybe create this in the center of my painting. Maybe a little bit off-center, just a tiny bit. A little bit to the right of center. So I would say, and you can always use a ruler when you start out your painting and your drawing. Of course, if we're drawing, you can just find where the halfway point is so 13 from this line to this line here 13 inches and that's would be six and a half inches is the center point like that so I make a little dot, dot there in the center that's the center point of the paper exact center going from left to right or right to left so that's and we said we'll make the vase maybe a little bit off center. So maybe I'll make the vase starting on the center here and then going to the right. So let's do that. Now when I look at the vase, the vase is pretty much if we if we broke our again, this is how we're we're doing the preliminary sketch to kind of lightly put some lines on here. So we're just gonna say this paper here, this rectangle is uh one one whole entire space division now we want to divide it into three sections even sections three even sections so i'll just take my pencil and do approximately one third there and one third here so that's about one two three three equal approximate equal divisions and then i'll create my since i i look at this now a second time and i say you know what i'm gonna have to Well, I can right now I'm thinking I just have to make my vase lower than this third top third section up here so I got to have my vase about here because I have to have enough room to get the flowers and the um, leaf forms and some baby breath and whatever in there so I'll start my vase about there it's actually a mason jar so I'll do a super light sketch and I'll just start out as if I'm draw, you know, doing my contour drawing. Okay, so that's about what I would do there. Can you see that? I'm looking in my uh, video viewfinder. I can see that pretty fine. So that's our first light sketch of the mason jar. And there's maybe a little bit of a oval to that. And the same down here, so I'm gonna make another light line there. Then I'm gonna go in and lightly sketch some of these leaf forms. Like 
like that. Then up here, I see a mini rose there. And then over here, there's another one. This is a smaller flower shape. So we're just going to do some flower shapes here. No need to get too fussy. I'm doing that preliminary sketch. I might have to move this down here for a second. I'm working from this, actually, my phone probably would be better if I work from across, just on the table across from me, but I'll work from this photo. And then this over here is the other, this is another mini rose here, like this. And then there's another one over here, like that. So we're coming along pretty good here. And then we'll have a couple of those stems up here. And then there's some baby breath on here. And I just do a few more leaf forms and a couple of uh, branches and stems and things. All right, that looks pretty good. So I move this back up here. Like that. And then I'll come over here and lightly sketch my shorebird. And it's about this much. Here starts the base. So I'll draw, this basically reminds me of like, it could be like a, um, maybe like an aspirin or something like that. It's kind of, you know, the base of this here for the shorebird. And then we'll go up with the base, uh, this here. And if maybe there's a leaf that you can always lift up a little bit and make the leaf a little bit smaller there so that we have a little bit of space between the uh, beak of our shorebird and that leaf form here in the uh, mason jar. And then our paintbrush. Let's do that. And I think... Okay, so I'm seeing it's about here, and it goes to about there. Okay, so that's we'll start over here. I'm going to start with the the end of the brush there, and then I'm just going to go all the way down like that. Okay, so that is pretty much the preliminary sketch. I wanted to get it in very lightly so that you can see we have the time now to adjust this if we wanted to. We could erase a little bit and say, oh, I need to, like we did over here, you know, I need to maybe move this leaf form over here a little bit closer into the vase so that we have a little more room for the shorebird here. And um, we can do something else too. 
if we had to erase a little, adjust something, make something a little larger. Maybe we we started drawing our paintbrush and it looks too small, so we have to make it larger. So then we would take our needed eraser at this point in time and then erase a little bit and make it larger if we had to. Uh, this looks pretty good for right now. So now that our preliminary sketch is done, you can then move on to the second part, which would be the contour drawing, which is we're going to go right in with our pencil. I'll just take a quick break. I'll sharpen my pencil again. And then we'll go in and do the contour drawing, which is right over the top of this, basically. But we'll just add a little more detail, possibly, you know, uh, here and there as we need to or we want to. You could, at this point, leave your preliminary sketch and just leave it as such. If you don't like a darker pencil line, let's say, in your um, paintings, then you might leave your contour drawing actually just the way it is. And you don't really won't have to worry. You can just start your painting at this point. But I like a darker pencil line in my paintings, and I also would want to maybe develop a few more little areas of uh, detail with my pencil, and also, again, make a darker line. And also, too, you'll see the darker line, and it'll be able, you'll be able to see the pencil lines basically better now that I go over the top with a contour drawing. So I'll do it for that reason. If I wasn't on a video right now, I would probably just leave it like this. I wouldn't really need to, I guess, um, do the contour drawing over the top of this. You could actually um, kind of go strict, you know, go right directly to the painting if you're happy with that first uh, preliminary sketch. So your preliminary sketch, you could actually think of it as a contour drawing as well, doing it lightly. So, and if you want to do it a second time, then you're just going to make yourself a darker pencil line over the top. And uh, we'll, we'll do the second uh, pencil line now, the contour drawing, and uh, we'll get started in just a second. All right, so we're going to continue here. Let's do our contour drawing. So I'll start again at my vase, which is my mason jar. I think there's a bit of a leaf over here. And I'm just going around. I'll just slide that out of the way for a second. I just want to get this other. Start down here, we get the bottom, bottom of the base of this pedestal. OK, 
Okay, that looks good. We'll do our brush here. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a shadow. Then I'll maybe put in a few of the shadows that I see here. They're, they're sort of more of the, most of the lights coming from over here. From our spotlight overhead. So the shadows are somewhat over here. I'll just make a very kind of light indication of some shadow over here with some pencil lines, but nothing too too much. And then here there's another shadow here for the shorebird. A little bit over here too as well. Cast shadow. And um, I think uh, we have a little bit of a little bit of markings on the bird over here. So I'll put that on like that. And I think that looks good. So we can use this now, our um, second our second part was the contour drawing. We've completed that. So we started off again with the preliminary sketch, which we just talked about briefly, how we want to get everything sort of situated on our paper really well in the proper places and then when you're doing a very very light sketch with your preliminary sketch you can erase a little bit and make something a little larger a little smaller or move it right or left whatever you have to any one of your um, parts of your subject matter for your composition then the contour drawing that's our darker pencil line where we actually go in and do the full contour drawing pencil line darker line and we're getting in more of the details of what we're seeing as we're drawing from either a, our um, photograph on a phone, any kind of, you know, iPad, home computer, TV screen, art books, actual physical photographs, um, anything you can think of, or, or just actually setting something up. Like I have across from me, I have the table with this setup right here. I just took a picture of it. And... Uh, now we're just going to move on to the painting portion. And again, we'll try to move through this kind of rapidly. We're not going to take too much more time. I just want everyone to kind of see the, it's basically a three-part process. And um, if you stick with this three-part process for most all of your drawing and painting for watercolor, you're pretty much, that's your solid go-to method and technique of getting everything started and drawn in on your paper and then paint it. So let's move on to the painting portion. We'll use the uh, a la prima method, which is we're gonna paint everything all at one time. We're just gonna go in and start with our darks. Over here, these leaf forms, those would be the darks. This is a dark too, so we can work on, I'll start with the vase and the uh, leaf forms here, the, dark, the darker leaf forms. Then we'll, maybe we'll do the shorebird over here with the darker tonal values of the, the bird and the uh, pedestal and then we'll do our paintbrush and then once we have that we'll start working in some of the details and some of the shadowing for the flowers and again we'll try to do a real kind of like a real quick um, demo here on this and, and not get too much um, uh, time on a lot of uh, de detail let's kind of just do this rapidly so that we can kind of see the process kind of quickly all the three steps one two and three and uh we'll see how it turns out all right so i'll just take a quick break and um we'll get started i just want to get my brushes ready and then we'll start i also want to mention too all the art supplies that i use here on my videos i have them linked in the description box below so in case you want to shop on amazon and look around and see the products that i use the supplies the brushes the paints pencils 
papers, all that kind of thing. I put it all in just one big large list for you so that you, if you do want to shop around and look and see if you need to pick up some art supplies if it's your first time, welcome. Thanks for coming by. And again, that list is for also people if you're just brand new and uh, you need to pick up some supplies to get started. I'll have some uh, newer supplies in there for beginners also mixed into the mix. You just have to look through it a little bit. And um, so let's uh, get started with the painting. All right, we're going to start the painting now. I thought to myself, let me put in the um, background uh, line for the table. And from where I'm, it's about there. So I just put the edge of the table back behind the um, subject matter here. And let's get started with the painting. I'll use the uh, number eight travel brush here, the Vinci Maestro travel brush. I'll start out with that. And we'll start out with the greens for the leaf forms. So I'll use some sap green, olive green. Cerulean blue. Use some of that too. A um, little bit of burnt sienna over here. So kind of just like a mixture of raw umber. I think that should be fine. Maybe a little bit of a French ultramarine blue too to get that dark dark that we might want to have once in a while. A nice dark shadow for our leaf forms. A little bit of burnt umber and cerulean blue, and then a little bit of green, sap green in that also. Okay, so maybe I'll even go right in and get a couple of those really dark darks. off a little bit. Maybe a little bit of uh, raw sienna. Yellow ochre. Okay, so that's getting in the darks right from the start, as you can see. We can get some of those stems right into the vase, the mason jar, like that. We can get some blue, cerulean blue. To change up some of that color inside there where the stems are. Bit of a dark leaf form there. And this is clear glass, this mason jar. So that is good. 
might be a little bit of shadowing in the bottom of that uh, for the shadows maybe we're going to start with a little bit of um, ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton maybe a little bit of gold in that And we might even have some kind of a little bit of that uh, feeling of uh, the glass, the blue kind of the light cerulean blue for the glass. Maybe a little purple in there too. So again, I'm making some subtle lighter washes now as we're working in the the vase area I might as well um, try to uh, kind of work all of it together in unison um, as we're going right there in that section that looks good I think if it looks a little bit too many lines starting to develop there where I'm kind of looking like I might have added a couple, maybe a little too many stems in there. You can always splash on a little water onto that where the stems are. And then you can always take a tissue or paper towel and just blot a little bit and twist a little bit too. And that kind of lightens it up a little bit. So I think that might be better. Okay, so we're, I might uh, change my brush here to a number five DaVinci. This is a synthetic brush. This comes with um, one of the palettes that I just purchased recently. I think it's a, uh, it's called the Whiskey Painters Private Stock Paint Box. And it comes with, and it's made in Italy, and it comes with a free um, Da Vinci synthetic brush. This brush we were just using is a natural hair brush, uh, Kalinsky Sable hair. This is synthetic, so this is uh, holds a little less water, but makes for some really good fine lines. We can just, it's handy. I just had it here on my art table, and I figured I would. So I'm going to use that, and then I'm going to do some of these uh, stems. And I might just move that out a second there. Okay. All right, so now I think we're going to let this dry. Um, the uh, darker darks we did here with the stems and the leaf forms and maybe we'll work on this over here uh, I think I can use my larger brush again and uh, I'll go in and get some brown and uh, this is a burnt umber and fr French ultramarine blue and I guess a little bit of raw, raw umber too and we'll just get this dark in here. Oh, 
like this. Then what I'll do is I'll try to rinse off the brush and go in and purple. And I'll try to tie in a little bit of the shadow there like that. Just a very, very slight shadow like that. And the same thing over here. We'll just take that same, maybe a little cerulean blue in there. Dry off a little bit. I rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then maybe just take whatever bit of um, paint that was on there for the shadow. I'm just going to do thin it out a little bit, make it kind of make it really not too uh, noticeable. A little couple splashes, and then if a couple splashes get a little bit too many, you can just blot up a few of them. No problem with a tissue or paper towel. I just wanted to get a few on there. A couple in there too. And maybe even a couple up in the flowers here just to loosen things up there. We'll have some cerulean blue as well. I wouldn't do too many. Again, you can, if you feel like you did too many, if it looks like it's too many d splashes, you can again lift them, lift them up fine, easy, quickly. And then I will get a little bit of a lighter raw umber. For the top of this pedestal here. And if it... If it seems to be maybe a little too dark on the top of the pedestal, you can always dry off your brush on a paper towel or tissue. And then just take one like that. And what's good about, good about that is it leaves it, you can see how it leaves a little bit of the color. I dry off my brush again a little bit. It leaves that light, really nice light color there with a little light wash, not too much though, not too dark. And then All right, good. And then we're going to do the same thing, some more raw umber, cerulean blue. And I think we'll do our shorebird, and I I think I can just rest my hand enough that I won't get too much uh, leaning into the paint or anything like that. And a little bit of more brown there. And then I'll just carefully, at this point, we could go back to our synthetic and just carefully smooth out some of the, uh, of the wash and then we can go in and And we can take our time too and just get our, our beak there. And that's looking good. And I'll put the, um, the uh, maybe another wash over the top of our, our shorebird here eventually. You know, so sometimes you'll get on that first wash like we have here. Sometimes you can go back in and Fuse in a little bit of color, kind of a wet into wet wash. And then I can also do this here too as well. I can do the, the, the stem like that. And we're Everything is looking good. I think I will do a little bit of. 
think what I'll do is I'll take a quick break. I'll empty out my water um, so that I can get some lighter washes. I'd like to let that dry though, where the splashes are on the flower. So I think I'll just go in and I'll do my uh, paintbrush here. I'll get a little, a little black here, like so. And then I'll just carefully do a parallel brush stroke. Then I'll get some raw umber. And I'll do the brush hairs, like so. Then I might rinse off the brush and get a little cerulean blue, maybe. Kind of that metal feel. I'll go in and get straight, straight orange for the uh, tip of the brush. Okay. And We can even get some shadowing, purple, a little cerulean blue. And it should be pretty light. And we would wait, definitely wait until the brush dries, the dark part of the brush handle. So I would make sure that everything looks pretty dry before we do this part. The shadow under here. That looks good. And then if anything looks a little bit, I can do some touch-ups now. That looks fine. Okay, let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll uh, finish up inside here with the uh, mini roses and a um, little bit of shadowing maybe here and there uh, for the flowers underneath the... Um, uh, flower shapes and uh, we should be good. All right, so now I'm going to just, uh, I moved my phone down here so I can work in the uh, flowers. And I'll take some water with a paper towel and I pretty much have mixed most of the colors now for the painting, so I really, I can just go ahead and wipe down the palette here, get everything cleaned up, and then I can just go ahead and start mixing anything I need in the palette. Okay, and then uh, what I'll do is I think I'll use the smaller brush again. So I'll use the uh, Da Vinci 
Uh, number five, uh, this is a um, travel brush. It comes apart like this. These are great. You can stow them in your pocket, uh, in your uh, backpack, um, purse. Um, and you can just, when you're done painting, you can close them up like this. It has a little hole in the top so it dries naturally so your brush hairs will will dry just naturally if you just if you left them in a purse or a pocket they'll just dry naturally and uh, it, with no problems and then when you're ready to paint again you can just you just take it apart like that put it back like that and that's good so I said we were gonna do some shadowing here I would I think I'm gonna use raw sienna And uh, I see blue as well. So I'll use cerulean blue. A little bit. Uh, just only a little bit though. And raw sienna. Just a little bit of that too. And that'll be sort of the mix I'll use to do some of the shadowing, shadowing under the flower shapes. And I'm, I'm not going to do a, too many. I think I want to just, just get some basic shapes like this. Some of these have maybe even a little bit of that lemony yellow, maybe. Yeah, that looks like it's... That's a little bit of a better color match, I think, with what I'm seeing. It looks a little different in my photo. I apologize, these photos don't always come come out great on our, uh, on our phones. Um, I, for some reason, I tried to lighten it up and make it more brighter, but I couldn't quite get it perfect. And then a little bit of the blue, too. And again, I'm not going to do too many. I'm not going to do too many shadows or get over, I guess I just don't want to get, I usually dry off my brush a little bit so that I don't put too much wash on these uh, flowers. Basically I'm seeing shadows underneath them on the undersides of the I think I'm going to lighten them up a little bit too. I'm going to be, I'm going to blot up some of that paint just to make it very subtle. Sometimes getting those really light subtle washes can be challenging. So if it looks a little bit too much paint, you can always blot up. Start again or I think it's fine if we leave it like this. Then I'll do some more green and brown and blue. Cerulean blue, sap green, burnt umber. And I'll get a couple of those darks here. Just to put a few of those in that I may have uh, missed on the first uh, go. And yeah, that's fine like that. And this is a few here. There's a stem there. I guess the key too, I, I always try to mention this is um, I try not to like fill in the whole bouquet of flowers. I try to leave uh, leave like space. I try to leave some space. Of white paper within the bouquet so that it kind of looks like it's a little bit lighter feeling so it's not doesn't feel like it's really dense and like a just like one bunch of flowers all cr crunched together so this kind of makes it feel a little bit more, more kind of airy then I'll just take a few more splashes here where the baby breath is there just to give a few more 
bits of feeling of uh, some baby breath. And I'll do the same thing here, a little bit of blue and the green there. And uh, like right there, sometimes I just have to add a little more water to the brush like that. And then that, then I can get the, the splashing kind of a little better like that. So that's fine. And uh, I think at this point we could do a little bit of the background. So I'll take that those same colors right here. And I'll just maybe put in a little bit of wash along this uh, line here, above the line. I'm, go I'm going above the line, like that. Cerulean blue. Then I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then I can just kind of slowly bring a little bit of that color with a, with a damp brush up from the Sometimes I'll just do a little bit of texture on the That looks good. Then I take a little bit of the purple, which is uh, ultramarine violet, with maybe a little bit of the raw sienna. And maybe I just, there was a little more shadow there, where the flowers are. And I think that's uh, going to be fine. I'm going to add a little bit of purple maybe to that. Again, this is kind of just a light, a little bit of light wash work. And uh, that's good. And what I'll do now is I'll take some white, titanium white paint. with my, uh, the number five Da Vinci travel brush. And I just noticed a couple areas that I could, I kind of painted over like a, an odd looking shadow right there. So I just touch that up like that. And then I noticed maybe I can add a couple highlights, maybe one on the brush. So maybe I can add a highlight on the brush here. Maybe one there and over here too, like that. And I think that's good. All right, so we'll, we'll call this uh, complete. And um, thanks for watching and painting along. We had a fun time going over like the three basic, um, three-part process of starting out with our preliminary sketch, getting in that really light sketch so that we can kind of make sure everything is sort of in the right perfect spot. If not, we can erase a little bit and adjust things, move things around a little bit, and then 
continue drawing. Then we went on top of that with our contour drawing, which is our darker pencil line. Um, and then thirdly, we did our painting and we did the Alla Prima method, of course, which is just painting everything at one time, going in, tackling the darks first, trying to get those in first. And then from there, um, we can kind of judge all the other darks and lights in the painting a little bit better. So that's why we kind of go in and get our darker washes in first. So I hope everyone's enjoyed this uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, thanks for again for watching. I'm hoping you'll subscribe below on the right hand side if you haven't. Um, subscribing is just, you'll keep in touch with us as we're working here. We're doing... Every type of painting you can imagine in watercolor, landscapes, seascapes, still lifes like this, flower paintings. We do figure painting, portrait painting. We also create um, interesting ink and wash paintings as well. We'll do a few of those coming up in the near future. Um, I think I haven't done an ink and wash in a few. Um, actually, I did one just recently, but uh, we'll continue on doing all of the different things you'll kind of see in my channel as we go. So if you subscribe, you'll just be kind of locked in with us here and uh, painting and drawing in watercolor on a consistent basis week after week. And we just um, continue to work together. It's great to uh, work with everybody. Thanks for the great comments. And uh, we'll see you in the comments section, of course, uh, every week. And uh, we'll see you soon on the next video. Bye-bye.